so we just went through the Prohibition Museum and the mixed drinks were a little harder down because, I mean, who drinks hard liquor slowly, right? Anymore nowadays, it's more of a shot sort of thing, but it was great. I had a Corpse Reviver number two. I uh, tried some of the other drinks and liked what I had, liked what I had. Real, real nice day out in Savannah, Georgia. Ooh, that sun's hitting. Oh, you are a majestic creature. Oh, he's Oh, no. Oh, I'm recording in feet. I think I scared him. I feel bad. He looked at me and then he peed. Oh no. Yo, pro tip don't point cameras at horses because they'll just take a leak like right on the spot. I mean, he's dumping a puddle over there too. It's not even a little bit. Like, it's like a. He just pissed like a gallon all over the street. How come when I do that, it's a crime? How you doing, babe? How's your picture? Good. Mm. I caught it. It scared me. Savannah was the first city in the colony of Say hi, Georgia. Please. And Georgia was the 13th and final British colony here in the Americas. Ooh. There's foot here in the Copper Colony. Walk up. There's been the Spanish, South and Florida, and the British colony of North and West of the Carolina. And the city of Spain is not going to want to alcohol. You guys can see how well that one worked out. <laughs> the second prohibition, no Catholic. Now, he didn't have anything personal in his Catholic, but the Pope at the time was Spanish, and he was worried in the event of a conflict with Spain that any Catholic here in Spanish could side with Spanish. He couldn't have that, so no Catholic. The third prohibition was no slavery. Ooh. He was personally against slavery, he thought it was wrong, and he was right about that. 100%. Okay. Oh, this is the street I wanted to pass. So he promised them cheap labor in the form of a debtor's servant, which were supposed to be the debtors and debtors' prison. You guys already know that did not work. And after they booted James Oglethorpe out of Georgia, slavery was implemented here today. Ooh. But at least for a while it wasn't. Now, the fourth and final prohibition, the lawyer. James Oglethorpe did not like lawyers. He thought that if you were truly innocent, you can adequately defend yourself, walk on, in the court of law. I find it a little bit ironic though because I think a good lawyer probably could have kept James Oglethorpe from getting sent back to England in the trade. Now he also instituted the Oglethorpe plan which laid out the entire town of the city and it's the reason that we have slaves. In the 10 years that James Oglethorpe was here, he built six squares in his absence at 24, 22 of which were made today. These squares are usually designed as community gathering areas with help of public events, or keep your lives stopped, and as fire breaks. They were supposed to provide enough distance that when you left from fire, it couldn't spread between buildings and catch the whole house of fire. Now that only worked because they only had buildings on the north and south sides of the square. I don't know if you guys noticed yet. We have actually built all the way around the squares. Woo! And completely defeated that purpose, and I, our city burned down about three times. So we learned that one the hard way, guys. And normally we're way past the good effect, guys. So we got a little bit of downtime here. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. I have one that really has something to do with history. Sure. He understands who's under history. Like, oh yeah, he understands it. It's whether he chooses to listen to it or not. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was wondering. I was like, is whoa stop? Yeah. Like, yeah. that's well, awesome. He's also kind of like, yeah, walk on, and so he's like oh. speaking to. Me. I want a freaking horse now. <laughs> He's smarter than most people I work with. So, are you saying he's your favorite coworker? <laughs> yes. No thought to it. Oh, look at that horse. Wow. <laughs> Holy crap. 
But generally, we try and find them a home where someone's going to interact with them every day. Yeah. So, if, like, you got a grandma that supports a yard pet, that's great for it. Uh, we'll do that. Or someone that's going to do weddings or something, we're going to work on like, one or two days a week. Yeah. That's good too. Or riding, stuff like that. Um, is known as a judicial square, which is just a more polite way of saying the hanging square. Here on the left, on a much lighter note, walk on. Ooh, it's the Juliet Gordon Low House. Walk on. That is the childhood home and birthplace. Those ladies are pretty ballsy Ooh. for going Juliet Gordon Low. House. I know. We found the Girl Scouts of America they, back in 1912. Walk on. Come on. She modeled them after the girl guys, which are based over there. Walk on. That is now a museum owned and operated by the Girl Scouts today. Unfortunately, they do not sell Girl Scouts in there year-round, which I was very disappointed to find out. Yeah, they just, all the people just told us. Yeah. <laughs> but that is at the first headquarters. She knew we wouldn't check. That's all it was. She felt real safe saying that. Yeah, yeah, the lady at the Adam Lyle house. Let me go, let me go. I don't know if you meant to or not, but I'm going to take advantage. Right? This is ridiculously and stable. Right here inside, guys, the Independent Presbyterian Church. This is built in 1891 and has the tallest church picture in Savannah, which you guys can't really see the guy right over Whether you know it or not, though, you probably have a pretty good look at it because you've never seen a movie for us yet. In the opening credits of Forrest Gump, I cover his road around the top of the people here, all the way into Chippewa Square, to watch the man play bus, where it landed at the end of town, and he's playing Forrest Gump. Now, in the movie Forrest Gump, is sitting in a bus stop. There's no bus stop here in Chippewa Square. In the movie, it was inside the square, which we put the bus stop on the left hand side of the street. Which of course makes no sense at all because bus doors open on the right hand side of the bus. <laughs> Next we have to block traffic off to the square and run it in the opposite direction you can go see. An event's what is kept right behind this white van where the triple on square sign is today. Don't worry, we did not run this away. It's in our visitor center museum if you guys want to check it out. But that is the location where Forrest Gump delivered his most famous book. My mama always told me a lot for talking about the stuff. That was one of the best we've heard today, I think. Well, my mom had ever told me that. She always said life is like a roll of toilet paper and you start to panic when she gets towards the end. But I suppose both are true. Can I come around you? Okay, cool. Let's call this a nomic drive by guys. <laughs> Thank you, Marissa. Hello, Travis. Hey. That's Travis Horace Rex right there. Over here on the right, guys, the First Baptist Church. It is the oldest standing house of worship in Savannah. It was built all the way back in 1833. Dude, this and park is here gorgeous. Over right, guys, is the Philbrook Easton House. This was built in 1844 as a quaint single family residence. I'm sure you guys can appreciate how quaint and cozy it is. I'm kidding, the model would have to the White House. It was a single family residence for a number of years and supposedly haunted until a group of lawyers moved in and scared the ghosts away. <laughs> oh. None of you guys are lawyers, right? No. no. Okay, good. I should have checked beforehand. <laughs> Ooh. I usually don't find out that anybody's a lawyer until the summit anyway, so that worked out pretty well. Walk on. Oh, we're passing a Mustang and a horse. <laughs> yes. Or on a carriage. That's oh, nice. Over here on the right-hand side, guys, is my favorite garden. There's really nothing historical about it. It's just my favorite. Make sure, though, that you appreciate it from this side of the fence, the other side, because that is some of the yard. <laughs> and coming up on our left here, guys, the statue of Mr. James Edward Overport, the man who founded the Vanna back in 1733. <laughs> I don't know if you ask me, I think the statue looks a little more like Captain Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, man. You can tell what that looks like, uh, just from commercials, you know. <laughs> now, you guys will notice the statue is facing south. Any guess this why that might be? All is good, all is good. <sighs> good job, Move. And this city is gorgeous. I can't believe it. It's like, it's not even a city at this point. It's like a museum. Ooh. Walk on. 
Yeah. We're going to California stop. Right. <laughs> I'm going to be out of California, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, out of three. Good day. Good day. That place is just called the Normally public. Normally it makes somebody mad. Anyway. Right here, guys, you'll see a vaguely Middle Eastern looking building. You guys see this here? Mm -hmm. This was originally built at the stables of the Georgia Hussars. A militia cavalry group founded by James Oglethorpe in 1736. They only rode Arabian horses and wanted to reflect that with the design of the building. Oh. It eventually became a showroom mill for Henry Ford's Model T. Henry Ford used to buy up all these old stables around the United States and show his cars. If you were to show America, how the iron will look like the building. If you, guys, if you guys can't tell though by the big brown goose ball pulling the carriage here, that idea did not work. Uh, another idea of his that did not work, if you guys see these trees, you'll see Spanish moss hanging down. It's a very pretty plant. Do not pick it up though. It's full of little red bugs called chiggers that'll bite you and give you a rash all over. Oh no, Dad, you put it on your head. Yeah, don't do that. Henry Ford thought it would be a great idea to use Spanish moss to stuff the seats of his model seat. Needless to say, that did not work, and he actually had to issue one of the first auto recalls in U.S. history to work the bugs out. Put him. <laughs> I'll be here all week, guys. It's not a good joke unless somebody groans. I like how you did your own put him. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you didn't like that one, it's all downhill from here, by the way. <laughs> now, over here on our right is the Green Melvin House. And this is built in the 1850s. It was the most expensive house in town. Valued at $93,000. That is a good chunk of change today. Whoa. Back then, though, it was an unholy amount of money. The house eventually became the headquarters for General William Sherman when he occupied Savannah during the Civil War in 1864. Walk up. When Savannah surrendered, we offered Sherman the most expensive house in town as part of a bargain for him not to burn the entire town on the ground like he did in most of the other cities on his path to see. <laughs> now over here on the left, guys, this beautiful brick building. It was originally built as the Armory of the Georgia Volunteer Guard, another militia group found in 1802. Now the Georgia Volunteer Guard eventually pulled into the National Guard, and this building was bought and restored by the Savannah College of Art and Design in 1979. If you guys ever see the acronym SCAD anywhere, that's where it stands for. Rather than build a brand new campus in the historic district, SCAD started to all these old buildings around town and needed a little bit of work, and restoring them to fit their needs. They have 63 buildings in the historic district today, and are one of the main reasons to Savannah Center City. They are also the largest art school in the United States and have kept the skull of the world. Now this means that you may see some college students wandering around Savannah here in their natural habitat. Do not feed the college students. <laughs> they will follow you home. <laughs> Good job, Governor. So why aren't they allowed to have cars? What's that? The college students. They are. Yeah, Nowhere to park, yeah. It's a lot of a lot of schools do that. I don't know, man. My, my, my friend went to school here and she had a car. Did she park on campus? Just freshman. Just freshman. Uh, oh. Yeah. oh, I didn't know that. A lot of the colleges do that. They tell you freshman sophomore year you can't have a Most require that you live on campus the first yeah. year. Well she lived in uh club's dad and had a park in the I don't know. I don't know how that works. I don't know if I think Now, this year is Jones Street, guys, and in my personal opinion, it is the most beautiful street in Savannah. I don't think I need to tell you why. Oh, yeah. Get that most of the homes yeah. on this street are built in the 1850s or 1860s, although there are some exceptions to that, and a lot of them are apartment buildings. But you won't be able to tell by looking at the outside. The city makes the homeowners see the interior of these buildings. Oh, yeah. Sale pending. Now, if you look at the purchase of the house, you can generally look at between two and six million dollars, which is why I only looked for one time. <laughs> How much is the apartment? Ooh, more than I can afford. That's all I know. <laughs> I live 40 minutes of people away. That is the pink house. The old pink house. There is no new pink house. That is the only pink house. But it gets its name because it is very old and very pink. It's actually the oldest building in Savannah. It was built back in 1771 for a wealthy cop purchased by the name of James Townsend. He wanted to reflect his wealth by building a lavish mansion. Boom. So he did, but he built it using red brick. Back then it was the cheapest building material available. He didn't know that anybody know that he had cheaped up on his house though. So he put on the red brick and his white suit was the now the downside to this is that the red brick leaves the white stucco and turn the entire house pink. So he had to paint it. 
It would also bleach through any paint that he used, though. And every couple years, he'd have to repaint the house. Ooh. So for a number of years, this is known as the old White House. Well, gone, 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 gone. All the way up until the 1920s, when he opened up the building and had a tear out of the basement. And she decided, not only did she not want to paint the house every couple of years, but she also really liked to paint the house. She painted the entire thing she could think of. It is now a high-end restaurant today. Uh, the food is very good. You do have to make a reservation, though, if you do have it. It's very, very good. I'm surprised this game has been managing to stay stable. Like with every rock, it's just staying completely straight. Literally, it looks like I'm just on the top of a car. Mm -hmm. Say hi, baby. It wasn't legal or anything, you just laid it on. You had to probably rather summer drinks back in the winter. We got to the next time, you just put it back in the summer, you just put it back in the summer, you just put it back in the summer. Unless you fans burning water or really any way to cool yourself off the top. The oven's back there in the wood burning and put up a lot of heat. And you had to set them all day long, you'd risk burning the entire house to the ground. Most folks actually didn't have one. Instead, we had a large public oven here to pass the square. That way you could make your meal at home, bring it to the bakery on the stair, leave it with him and go by the day. When you came back, you're down and down for the dough road. Roll it, roll it, mark it with a bee, put it in the oven, baby, baby. That actually comes from the three kids using the big seven. Now there's a bank, literally on every corner of Dutch Square. About seven banks in total. And we like to say there's still a lot of dough here in Dutch Square. Oh, you don't need to laugh, that was a little half-baked. <laughs> but no, I just think it was a crummy joke. I'm trying to keep my tour well loving with you about it. I want to bring out a wide smile. I've actually been working on these all week. I think I got a bring to the occasion, guys, but I'll be honest with you, my good joke's getting a little bit overdone. A little stale, if you ask me. I guess they don't really need to continue. In fact, none of my jokes really make you laugh your bums off. So I guess I better not. Well, one more thing, guys. The parking meter's around town, shut up. Just the... It keeps hitting them jokes. Hit it, offer nickel. I was on a roll, wasn't I? I mean, at least you guys laughed at you. I thought it stopped. I thought it stopped. Dude. It's weird because him saying, I'm done now, is still another pun. Don't forget Jesus Christ. He loves you guys very much. Thank, Thank you. You, you as well. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your day, sir. Thank you. 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 Does that? <laughs> Spreading the word of the Lord. Or whatever he said, I don't know. Even this UPS store looks gorgeous.